personal information of thousands of thousands of Indiana gun owners at risk for public disclosure. It's by Lee Williams of AmmoLand.com. Links are in the description box down below, as always, if you really want to look into these stories. So, Gary versus Glock is a 24-year-old lawsuit that refuses to die. Attorneys for Brady filed a lawsuit on behalf of the city of Gary, Indiana in 1999. At that time, more than 40 cities filed similar lawsuits which sought to hold gun makers and gun dealers liable for murder that were committed using firearms because nothing is new under the sun. Nothing is new, right? The idea of trying to hold firearm companies liable for this, that, and the other thing, it's not new. It's not anything that has been not done before. Every type of gun control is just recycled nonsense. Some of the manufacturers named as defendants included Glock, Smith & Wesson, Colt, Sturm, Sturm Ruger, Beretta, and High Point, which is hysterical because High Point probably doesn't have any money to give back in a lawsuit because they're High Points. Shout out to High Point. Various gun dealers, nation, national and local, were also named by the city of Gary in the lawsuit. Unfortunately, many states and federal governments passed laws to protect firearm industry from this type of lawfare simply because you cannot hold a manufacturer responsible for a product that is done recklessly by an individual. I know that's a really poorly worded sentence. You don't hold Ford accountable for drunk driving accidents. You don't hold uh, Budweiser accountable for liver disease or any of these other kinds of things. You don't hold McDonald's accountable for obesity. So this idea that you can single out one company, that you can single out one company for the the actions of the people who par purchase their products is absolutely ridiculous. Doesn't mean they won't stop, but it just means they're ridiculous. By 2006, almost all of these nuisance lawsuits were quashed, except for Gary V. Glock. The pesky lawsuit flared up again last month when Indiana Superior Court John Judge John Sedina denied an order to squash subpoenas for records maintained by several large Indiana gun dealers. As a result, the dealers now must turn over their acquisition and distribution books to the government, which contains the names and addresses of hundreds of thousands of law-abiding gun owners, which is ridiculous. The idea that a judge can force you or can force a company to give up their private data for, for records for what? For what reason? Capella's, of course, and this feeds into something I've been telling you for a while. The reason, one of the reasons they want to crush, they want to crush these uh, mom and pop FFLs, these small FFLs, is simply because if they do, they can funnel them all into big box stores. And if they funnel them into big box stores, then guess what? You'll have places like Cabela's, which is complying Right off the bat, Academy, Cabela's, you name it, your big box store. We saw it during the cough, cough, jab, jab, that these big box companies have no problem working with the government, whether it's mass mandates, whether it's giving over your personal data, they don't care. And they that that's why the feds want them, like, hey, you can go buy a gun from Cabela's or Academy or whoever, but understand that when the time comes, we're getting your information and they are going to have no problem complying in that regard and just giving that information over look at that cabela's has given more than two hundred thousand transactions that occurred in its hammond, hammond indiana store bass pro shop because they're owned by the same megacorp will soon be ordered to report the details of more than two hundred thousand of their transactions that occurred in a portage indiana store other de dealers will soon receive similar subpoenas so I, I guess the moral of the story is don't buy your gun from a big box store, right? Don't buy your guns from big box stores. Just don't do it because these people will, and it's not even these people. It is the, um, the mega corporations that don't care about you. They're going to give your stuff up. No problem. Um, so the firearm industry had several chances to kill the lawsuit. First, they appealed to the Indiana Supreme Court, which denied the company's motion to dismiss. They stated that if the city's allegations were proven, the companies would be liable for damage and injunctive relief. In 2005, the gun manufacturers tried again to dismiss the case by claiming it violated the Federal Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act, which it technically does. A state appellate court found the city's case was, quote, not barred by the PLCCA because the gun dealers and gun manufacturers allegedly violated Indiana's public nuisance law. I do love it when the court picks and chooses when federalism works. Well, 
The federal law that's supposed to protect the gun dealers doesn't work here because we don't want it to. Of course, that's that we are. I mean, right now we have a little bit of an advantage because we have supposed six to three conservative court, but we are ruled by the tyranny of the judiciary. 2015, Governor then Mike Pence for brains, as Mike Church likes to call him, tried to help by amending Indiana's immunity statute to make it retroactive to 1999 to cover the name of the defendants. But in 2019, the Indiana Court of Appeals denied the defendant's motion to dismiss, claiming the amended statute did not protect the defendants from litigation. In his last month order, Judge Sedina wrote, quote, after reviewing the filings of the partings, hearing oral arguments and being fully advised, Gary may move forward on its public nuisance claim based on the unlawful sales of firearms that may, that have indeed harmed Gary. The potential publication of public information of hundreds of thousands of law-abiding gun owners is eerily similar to an interactive map of pistol permit holders that Garnett's Journal News of Westchester County, New York, published in 2012. The response to the newspaper's map was vicious and loud. Outraged gun owners pushed for the publication, uh, published, pushed for the publication of the addresses of the journalists responsible for the tragedy. The danger, many claimed, was that the newspaper was creating a handy tool for burglars seeking to break into homes and steal firearms. That same concern applies to Indiana gun owners. Besides the fact that you should have a right to private business transactions. This whole idea that there's a live, a nuisance lawsuit or something like that. And that's why you have law enforcement. If there's an individual gun that you can trace back, then they can go to Capella's bait. Cabela's based on the serial number, or any other kind of stuff. You don't just blanket pull every single gun owner's name out of a store and then get access to them because you feel like it. It is absolutely ridiculous. Privately, some say the state officials will likely turn over the data to federal agents like the ATF. What do you mean they will likely? They absolutely will turn it over to them, which has been surreptitiously creating an illegal gun at registry of gun owners since Joey B took office. Folks, this is absolutely, it's a terrible precedent too, because you think about it, because once this actually takes place, once this actually starts, it's going to set the table for other states to do this. Oh, we have a nuisance law too in our state, so we're going to sue. Oh, we have a nuisance law, so we'll sue. We'll do it here. And then they will get more and more gun owners um, data. So I guess the, the, the moral of the story is that do not buy your firearms from a big box store. And if you live in a state that allows private transactions, you should probably engage in that because the government will go through whatever lengths they can to get access to your information so they can track you in every way, shape, and form. And this is just another, this is happening in a red state too, by the way, folks. Red Indiana, this is taking place. Meaning it's an, it's a, it'll be an absolute go in blue states if this is allowed to go forward. And shame on the judiciary in the state of Indiana for allowing something like this to happen, putting people's private data at risk, their private information at risk to serve some kind of liberal public agenda. Okay. Taking the 20,000 names from Cabela's and Bass Pro Shop in Indiana is not going to make anybody safer. In fact, it's going to make those 400,000 people in Indiana more unsafe. It's going to put them in potential danger. So congratulations, you bunch of morons. Thank you.